Good afternoon. Thank you for still hanging around. Hope you're still awake after that lunch. Um, so welcome to this uh, presentation of, look ma, no hands. Um, how to manage content without technical skills. Uh, I'm not sure how we came up, how we came up with the title, but I guess instead of coding, you're just using your mouse and copy and paste. Um, so just a little bit about us. So we work, my name is Blake Newman. We work for a company called Agilina. Uh, we're a small Drupal shop focusing exclusively on federal government. So we've been in Drupal for Gov since 2010. So here's a sample of our clients, uh, National Archives, Department of Education, State, um, FCC, uh, Smithsonian Institution. So, um, so in the previous slide, I, I mentioned National Archives. So that's, that's one of our clients that we picked up a couple years ago. Uh, for those who, for you who don't know, they're the, our nationals nation's record keeper. They maintain the founding documents like the Constitution, Bill of Rights, um, you know, Declaration of Independence. Um, also the 15 presidential libraries like um, Obama, Obama Library, Trump Library, Carter Library, Reagan Library, Bush Library, all those library museums. Uh, they got dozens of microsites. Some are in WordPress, mostly in Drupal. Um, and they're they're staffed basically by historians and um, librarians and library scientists. And I guess they start off as, as historians and then they become archivists. Uh, and they're big Drupal advocates. And if you kind of think about it, I mean, because they're responsible for, for museums and libraries, um, which kind of rely a lot on taxonomies and categories. And so Drupal is just like the right fit for that. Um, but. Um, but they're not really, the, the historians there, the, you know, they're not really known for being web and tech savvy. So, so that's kind of like why we're here is because when we won the contract in 2021, um, they, they, liked, they liked Drupal because of the taxonomies and the categories and things like that. But they also liked their WordPress um, because it was easier to use. Um, and WordPress had this Gutenberg editor, the default editor. Um, so, so they required us to use Gutenberg when we won the contract. Um, and when we first read that, um, that was kind of like our face. We're like, what? <laughs> That's a WordPress thing. Um, and so we just kind of like scratched our heads a little bit. Um, and then we kind of like accepted, okay, fine. We got to use Gutenberg. Um, so let's just do it. But then the more we started using it, the more we started liking it. And the more feedback we got from our customers, the more we started to love it. So we're really, uh, and we also started contributing to it. So. We actually, it really grew on us. We, we really like it. We've, we've definitely drank the Kool-Aid and we've really embraced the whole Gutenberg concept. Um, has anybody used Gutenberg for Drupal? Okay, one, two, um, three. And some of you may probably, you've used WordPress, right? No? Nobody wants to admit? Okay, one person admits they use. So anyway, Gutenberg won us over. So in a nutshell, it's, it's the default editor for WordPress since uh, 2018. Uh, I think it was actually started, the project started like maybe 2017, but it took a little while to kind of like uh, make it the default. It's based on content blocks, which is great for responsive design. Uh, it's also kind of a little bit conducive to atomic design as well. Um, the code base is in React, um, and, and there's some kind of, well, there's advantages and disadvantages of that, but you know, a lot of the cool kids like to code in React, and so. Um, and it's currently a Drupal module. It's not, um, yeah, you have to install it and, and enable it. Um, and it's used by more than 3,000 sites. Now, that vertical line, that's when we got the contract. So there was, there was about 2,000 downloads when we first found out that we had to use uh, Gutenberg, which was not very impressive because, I mean, it had been out for a few years, but it only had a couple thousand downloads, so that didn't really impress us. That was one of the reasons for our skepticism is because it just wasn't widely used. And so if there's a lot of bugs, there just wasn't a, a lot of community to kind of help solve those. Um, oh, it's also is one of the, the, if you went to DrupalCon in, in Pittsburgh, uh, it was one of the Pittsburgh winners uh, that I'm not sure how much money they got. Maybe 20,000. Maybe 20,000 to, to kind of like do some R&D on, on that. So that kind of gives us hope that maybe one day it might make its way into, in, inside Drupal. So benefits has got a true what you see is what you get. Um, you know, the WYSIWYG, not, not all, even though they say it's WYSIWYG, it's not always WYSIWYG. Sometimes you have to like, click on a preview, but this one, you don't have to click on a preview. That's kind of because of the React, is that you can actually see it as you're doing it. Um, 
flexible fluid layouts, as, as you'll see when, when the bond demos. Um, reusable blocks, which is great because you, know, you have to build it once you know, and just keep reusing it and you have to keep doing the same thing over and over again. Uh, dynamic, so you'll kind of see these. But the most important thing is that it doesn't really require technical skills. Um, and it's nice to have a developer to kind of help with some of your CSS, but once it's all set up, I mean, pretty much just site builders, content managers, you know, you could just give them the tool and then they could run with it, which is why our clients like it so much. They like not to have to depend on the developer every time they want to make a change or something. So, uh, and here's some of the, the ones that we've recently deployed it on is, you know, these couple of libraries uh, down the road, we're gonna do the Reagan library and the Bush library and, and all the other libraries that we're responsible for, but one by one. So we, we've done a handful of, of implementations and, and all the clients have gotten great feedback so far. So I'd like to introduce, uh, introduce Yvonne. Um, so now, I'm not sure if you have kids or not, but you know, we're not really supposed to talk about you know, our favorite children. We're not supposed to have favorite children. We're not supposed to have favorite employees, but he's one of my favorite employees. Um, so he's a triple certified Drupal expert in Drupal uh, 9 and 10, um, which is formerly known as the Grandmaster. It means he, I mean, he really knows what he's doing. Uh, but he's also certified as a Drupal developer in Drupal 7, Drupal 8, Drupal 9, Drupal 10. Uh, which kind of shows how long he's been around, 10 years in the Drupal world and even longer in the web business. Um, but, but Yvonne's great. He's fantastic with clients and, he's, and he could, not afraid to do anything front end, back end, doesn't matter. He'll just take the ball and run with it. And right now he's our director of innovation. So he helps to kind of like build and create new things for the company to use. So I'll turn it over to Yvonne. Okay. Okay, hi everyone. In this, in this case, for, for this demo, what I would like to show you is the, the usual editorial workflow when you have maybe someone creating an article, a, a draft article, then maybe a, a designer or a marketing people gets a layout or a new design for this. And then as a, as a content editor, you will need to match that layout. And usually when you need to do that in Drupal, you will need to use things like Paragraph or Layout Builder. But in this case, we'll build that using Gutenberg with some of the out-of-the-box components and also with some components that we did to, to make it look better. But yeah, that will be the, the process that we will follow for this demo. And I also record the, the, the process because usually when we try to demo things here, is, there is a risk, all the things are failing when you are presenting. <laughs> so it's okay, let's go there. So um, in general, I, in, before the demo, I want to, to explain really, really fast how the, the, the Gutenberg editor looks like. Uh, this is the Gutenberg editor. You will find like, uh, like some blocks or components that you can use in the left side once you press the, the plus icon. I will show you uh, in, in minutes. Uh, then you have like a visual part of the editor where you see all the things that you are editing or you are doing. And then you have a right panel where you see all the default things from Drupal, like the title of the note and all the other fields that are common in, in Drupal notes in Drupal content types. And also in the right panel, it is uh, the right panel usually contains the options for the company that you are selecting at that moment. So you will see that in action in, in, in minutes. And we'll, as, I, as I told you before, we'll take a Google Doc and then a design from the, same, from the same Google Doc and then create that content in Drupal using Gutenberg. So these are the process, let me go there. So as you can see, here we have this. This is the, the article that we want to write, that we want to write in the, in, the, in, the, in the blog section. So I have all the things in here. I have, as you could see, I, this is just plain text with titles and things like that. And then we have, this is the design. So we have a designer and the designer said, this is the layout that I would like to, you to produce with this content. So as you could see, we have the titles here. The list now are these three columns here. Then he decided to add an accordion for this part, and then to add some, maybe some cards in here, something similar like cards with the icon and text. And then just some sections with media in the left and in the right side, something like that. So we were able to generate this. This is a, final, a real final result using Gutenberg in the Drupal Center of Excellence website. So this is the real article right now, so as you could see. And this is the, what we were able to build using Gutenberg. And now I will show you the demo and I will explain you the process that we follow using Gutenberg for this content. So as you can see, all the things are there with the icons, with the media, 
and all those things for the content. So let's go there. So as I told you before, I have a recording for this, so sorry, I need to, <laughs> to drag the recording there. So I will show you the process. Okay. So this is the process. So as you can see, I will start with a, just an empty, uh, with an empty content or, con oh, sorry, empty nodes in Drupal, empty article. I will do the process. Some parts will be uh, just a speed up because I'm doing repetitive tasks, like creating the same, uh, repeating the column and things like that. But in general, you will see the process is really fast. Uh, I didn't uh, speed up all the process. I just uh, speed up some of the parts that are repetitive. So this is just the, the empty article. So I will start just going to the, to the original uh, draft. And then I will add the article title as usual in any other content in Drupal. And then I can start adding the first paragraph to Gutenberg. So you can see, I just can start typing in the Gutenberg editor. That's really fast. And now the next section, as you can see, is this section with the, with the light blue background and getting the full width of the content. So I need to produce something similar to that. So I will just start by copy and pasting the things in here. And I can just drag and select the items in Gutenberg and group them together to produce like a new component to be able to add new, new options. So as you can see in the right panel, now that I have selected these components, I have the options to change the color. And then I have a toolbar. Uh, once I select any component, I have a toolbar to control some more options about that component. And in this case, what I want to do is to add some classes. Maybe you have a CSS framework like Bootstrap or something like that. It allows you to add classes to the elements so you can just control the things in that way. So as you can see, I can really easily generate a section like that, controlling the, the right panel options like the background color and then controlling the alignment of the elements. So now I will need to create the columns, the three column section. So for that, I'm going to the, to the components library and then I'm selecting the, the columns component and I'm just starting with a three columns layout and then I just start adding the first, pair, the, first, uh, the first column. So for the first column, I just add in the number one, then I copy and paste the content for this column, and now we'll need to start adding the styles. For the, for the numbers, I have some helper classes for that, so I, as you can see, I'm going to the, to the right panel, I'm, I'm just adding the classes in there from my CSS framework, so I have the things ready, and now I'm converting this element instead of being a simple paragraph, to be in a heading, and then I can start doing the, the rest of the things. And similar to the, for the list, I can control the background color, I just select the list, and the right panel will automatically change to allow me to edit the things in there. So I just start controlling the, the classes to assign the border, and to assign the rounded corners, and things like that. So as you can see, I was able to generate this part, and now this is a good candidate to generate a reusable block. So Gutenberg allows you to create reusable blocks for these kind of parts where you need to do the same, exactly the same layout or piece of a group of components together all the time. So in this case, I'm just giving a name to this reusable uh, block. So it's, in this case, I'm calling it number column or something like that. And now, as you could see, it shows that it's a different component type that is a, a reusable block. And I'm clicking this part that says convert to a regular block because I don't want to edit the original one. I just want to make sure of that. So I'm just convert it. And as you can see, now I just create the reusable block and I'm being able to use it right now. I don't need to reload the page or do any other thing. I'm just able to reuse that component in that moment. So I can do the same for the third one. I can just search for my reusable block and that's it. It will be there. So now I will do the process really fast <laughs> for the other three columns and they will be ready. So I will just do the same, and they, that will be it. So now I can go to the next one. And as you can see, the next section, the only difference is that it has a different background color, and in this case, it has the, the accordion, the accordion component. So I will go there, and it will do a similar process that I did before. I will just start by copy and pasting the, the first part. So I can just go directly to the Gutenberg editor, start adding a paragraph, pasting the things inside, it will recognize the headings and things like that. And just grouping the things in the same way, adding a background color 
in this case I need to change the color for the text because it will it will need to be uh, different from the from the background so I'm doing that from the right panel and that's it and now I change the alignment as I did for the other and that's it and now I need to match the margins for the rest of the content so I'm adding this helper class that I have in the in the CSS framework that we are using so I, I add this class here container so as you can see as soon as I type the things the things are happening. This is the real speed that Gutenberg Editor is providing to the editors. This is not because I'm I record this. And now, now I see that maybe this is another opportunity to create a reusable block because I will need to create similar sections below. So in this case, I'm doing the same. I just call it section to be able to reuse this kind of section multiple times, and that's it. Now, I will need to create the accordion. So as you can see, I'm just showing you the accordion. So it will have some titles and things and the elements in there. So I will, I can start by, uh, the, the accordion components will be those. So I will start by adding the accordion, uh, the accordion component that we provide. This accordion component that you will be, uh, that you will see here, this is inspired in the USWDS accordion that we uh, contribute. There is a Gutenberg USWDS module that we contribute, and this is like a like a uh, extension that we did, especially to modify some of the styling for this website. But as you can see, that's really easy. I just add the accordion item. Maybe I can I can show you this uh, a bit better because maybe you you didn't see. But I just in this case I just what I just did is that I. Uh, I go to the, to the Gutenberg editor, I press the slash uh, keyboard uh, in my keyboard, and then it shows me the, the available <coughs> components, so I can select one of them, and I just start like uh, typing accordion, and it, will, it was doing like an autocomplete for me. So for the content editor, that's really great, because they don't need to go to different places to search for the components, they just need to start doing something like that. They just start typing accord, and it will find the, the component, and now I can just start adding accordion items inside. So I just click on there, and the accordion item is there. So you are ready to start just adding the content in that moment. Doing the same thing using, using paragraphs, you know, it will open, a, <laughs> it will open a, another entity or something like that, and a field set, and you will need for Ajax to load to show you things for each item and things like that. But using Gutenberg, you don't have that uh, experience. You, you, you see the things working at, in that moment. So it's really easy for me just to add another accordion item. So as you can see, I just click there, and the other accordion item is appearing right there because of, of the React uh, working behind the scenes. So that's it. I will do the same for the other ones. That's really, really fast. This is a repetitive process, so I'm speeding up the things in this place so I can complete the, the accordion items. But as you could see at the end, for the editor, the, the experience that we are giving is really great. They just click on an element, and they can start typing inside, and they can modify whatever, whenever they want. So that's it. And also, I will select in, this, in the right panel, I will select this option that is fine by default, expanded by default, for, to, make it that, to make it work in that way once the visitors open the page. So that's it. We are ready with the, with the accordion. And now we can go to the next section that is similar. We just need to change the background color to gray, and then I will need to create some cards below. So let's start reusing the reusable block <laughs> that we just create. In this case, I'm reusing that, and I will just uh, click on this uh, button to ensure that we are not editing the original one, and I start changing the things. I'm just uh, clearing the color and things like that, and I will be ready to, to start with this one. And I will do the same process for this one. As you can see, the elements before, they, are, they will look like cards with icon and text. So for this one, we are using a, a component that is uh, given out of the box in Gutenberg that is called media and text. So you will see that, with that component in action right now. So let me, sh in the same way, I will just start typing the slash in my, in my keyboard and the, the Gutenberg editor will open the, some of the reason uh, uh, components that I use, and I will select the columns. Uh, I will start by selecting the columns, sorry, to be able to do this uh, layout with, uh, with two elements in the right side and two elements in the left side. And I will use this component, media and text. And as you can see, I click the component, 
and the component is ready to be used. And one good thing about this is for using media elements, you can still use the media library. So this is a good integration between Gutenberg and Drupal features because you can still use the media library from Drupal to do these kind of things to use uh, your, your assets. So in this case, I'm just selecting the, the icons and pasting the, the content from my Google Doc. And I will do the same process for the other ones really fast because this is the same task, just uh, searching for the elements in the media library and then pasting the, the text from, from my Google Doc and that's it. But now you will see, I need to control the width of the, of the icon because the icon is taking more width than I need. So I just need to go to the Gutenberg editor and find this drag <laughs> thing or this control and do the things from there. I can do it from there. Or I can do it from here, from the right panel. As you can see, as soon as I drag, the things are being modified here. So I can do it from here. Or I can just type in here. So as you can see, the Gutenberg editor is really flexible. You can do the things really visually and clicking things, or you can drag the the controls like that. You can, for media elements or in general for file, for images, you can uh, control the image styles. That is something from Drupal core as well. So that's really great. You can control the alternative text and things like that. So you can see that's really powerful and easy to use for a content editor. They don't need to go to different places and try to find the things where they are. So all the things are there for them to use and they don't need to wait for the things to happen. So. We'll go to our last section. This is that section with some examples about how to use Drupal content types. And those examples are just like sections in a stripe. One is white, the other one is gray, and things like that. So I will start with a similar process. I will add the section a reusable block that I just create, and I will modify it to start with, the, with this section in maybe in white color. So I will do this. And I will do something similar that I did before. Maybe I can delete this one. I can just paste the other one from, the, from my Google Doc. And I will do that. I will paste the other one from, from Google Doc. So let's go do that. And then I will use a similar component that I used before. In this case, I don't need a, a, an icon. I will just use an image, a real picture. So I will do the same. I will just use the toolbar for the component. I will change the, orienta the orientation of the component, and that's it. I will go to a media library to search for that image. And then I will copy and paste the text in here. So uh, that, what, that is the process that I will follow right now. I'm just copying and pasting there, and using the media library to search for my pictures. And just inserting the pictures. I can do the same, I can change the width. As you can see, I can change the image style and things like that. So it's really easy for a content editor to control these kind of options. And I will start doing the same for the other ones. Uh, I can just start by creating the, the new one below this one. And then I can group the elements, change the background, and things like that. So I will do those things right now. So I'm just copying and pasting the, the things for, for that one. And then I'm searching for, for, for the image. So let me so let's go there. And that's it. Now we need maybe to, to create the background. In this case, I'm just selecting the component there and adding like a wrapping element out there, like a group element out there. And in that group element, I can just change the color, the background color. And I can also change the alignment for that one. And I will produce this layout and now I need just to add the classes to make it look like the others to, to fit the, the page margins and that will be it so I will have this I will use the same strategy for the for the other ones so in general as you could see I'm producing this layout and it's, it, not, it it was not requiring me to to wait for things to load uh, as, as using sometimes the layout builder or paragraph I was able to to find the things in a, in a consistent way, I just can use the right panel for some options and the toolbar from the elements for the others. So in general, for a content editor, this is a really great experience because they don't need to learn different processes of Drupal or understand how the fields work or, or the widgets work in Drupal. They just need to use this intuitive uh, visual editor that is Gutenberg, and that's it. I, they will be able to produce this kind of thing, so.
this is really fast. So right now I'm finishing the, the article. And then at the end I can polish in some way the margins and things like that. But in general, the things are, are looking really, really good now, as you could see. I can select the elements and I can replace. So as you could see, the experience is really great. I can just replace the, the media elements in there and that will be really fast for the content editor. So that's it. I'm doing the, the thing for the last one really fast. And that's it. I, I will be ready. So at the end, I will just, as you can see, in this, at this moment, there are some margins that are not good. For example, the margin between the, the text and the, and the second section. So we can improve that margin using some of the helper classes from, from the CSS framework. Most of the framework used to have these kind of helper classes to add margins or to improve these kind of the things. So I'm just publishing the things out there, adding the classes, maybe another margin here for this one. So as you can see, the result is exactly the result that the visitors will have. You don't need to do a preview of these things to, to say how they will look for my anonymous users or something like that. So you can see the final result in here. So all the things are happening right there in the visual editor of Gutenberg. So in general, I'm doing this right now. I'm just polishing the things, ensuring that all the things are looking good. And then I can just, at the end of this, and after the final review, I can just save this content. So I'm just adding more margins here. In this case, I'm adding the margin at the top. So I just change the, the helper class. And that's it. We are ready. I will add the category because we can still use the Drupal fields. <laughs> and that's it. I'm ready. We are ready to save this content and to see the final result. But the final result, the, the good thing is the final result is the same as we just said. So this is a real Wizard Week experience because this is the final result. So as you can see, the only difference is that now we are able to see the full width, the, the full area but things are working in the same way. So this is a real Wizard Week experience, and this is a better uh, experience for a content editor doing this process. So I also intentionally, intentionally, as you can see, I also leave that small margin there, because you can see the, the exactly the same result is in the editor and for the visitor. So that's really great, because you can trust that Gutenberg is showing you the final result. So that's it. So in general, uh, what I want to, after showing you this, it's important to mention that now that you see this, this flexibility, there are, some, um, there are some situations where Gutenberg is not the best choice. Because Gutenberg is the best choice when you need to, do, when you need to provide this flexibility to the content editors. Because as you can see, Gutenberg is not restrictive. You, you can use a lot of components, a lot of things. You can go really creative and <laughs> do crazy stuff. But uh, this is the great thing about Gutenberg. You can also, sometimes you can restrict some of the components that they can use, but this is not, uh, this is not the intention of Gutenberg, to be restrictive. So in general, if you have a content type or, uh, yeah, a content type, for example, an even content type like this, that you need to present all the times in the same way, using the same uh, positions for things, Gutenberg is not an option for that. It's just Drupal in the core, you just need to use view modes and fields and that's it. You will be able to do this layout. And the other situation where, where Gutenberg is not the best option is where you need to trust in your taxonomies or any other uh, categories like that to be able to do a faceted search that is using facets in a heavy way. Because as you can see, most of this content is stored in the body field. This is important. Most of this content that you were seen for that, uh, for that note or that article is stored in the database in just one field. So that's good if you need a website when, when the search, where the search will be like a, a full text search where the people will be searching for the things that are inside the, 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 the content itself. But when you need to create facets with a lot of things by, I don't know, maybe you have products and you need to facet by price and things and this and this and this. Maybe this is not the best option for Gutenberg because in Gutenberg most of the, th most of the things are stored in the body. So you, at the end you will need uh, the fields in Drupal. So this is an, another situation. But for the rest of the situations, I think Gutenberg is, is a really good choice and provides good flexibility for the content editors. 
and and in general it, it is good also for developers because Gutenberg is working really nice with Drupal right now. So yeah, we have more some articles that you can find about Gutenberg in Drupal, and in general there is there are some uh, channels in the in the Slack, so you can go there and and the people used to respond really fast about how you can use Gutenberg in Drupal. And yeah, right now we were able to provide as well some. We, we, pro we contribute two modules to Drupal related to Gutenberg. One is the USWDS components for Gutenberg. So you can start that module and you will be able to use USWDS components. We already have maybe five or six components. We are start adding more, but yeah. And the other, uh, we create a module to be able to embed other content into Gutenberg. So you will be able, if you want to create, for example, a, a teaser of another article in your, in your current one, you will be able to do that using the other module that is Gutenberg content embed. So yeah, I think that's it. Uh, so we can go to the questions right now. Did it go too fast for you, or is that OK? Mm -hmm. Sure. First, I want to say thank you for the Gutenberg USWDS module. That is a fantastic addition. Uh, uh, my question is, one of the uh, issues I have with Gutenberg is uploading a PDF document in the Gutenberg file block. The default is it shows up in a, an inline, you know, uh, inline PDF viewer. Is there a solution to changing that default that you're aware of? I think right right now, what I remember in, in the last version of Gutenberg, uh, the, they have a, another another component that allows you to have like a link, uh, like a nice looking link with the download option. You can enable or disable the download option. So yeah, right now there are uh, better integrations with with media assets in general. Yeah. What version? Uh, I don't remember. I mean, we just. We just upgraded. We, we just did our big Drupal 10 upgrade last weekend. Uh, so I think we're current on the Gutenberg module. Yeah, maybe it was related to the component because, as you could see, Gutenberg provides a lot of components out of the box, but Maybe uh, you can, I remember there is one called file or something like that, that allows you to control if you want to show just a link to the file with maybe with a yeah. download button, something like that. Okay, I'll look into that, thank you. Okay. Anything else? Mike? Uh, you mentioned that you can insert like article teasers, is that, so you can insert entities into Google? Yeah, the, this is the, the, the other module that is called Gutenberg Content Embed. Uh, we, we, we create that module because we needed that for NARA as well. <laughs> so they needed maybe to embed some uh, galleries. So they need at least to embed the, the, the preview of a gallery or something like that. But the galleries were another content type. So we need to find a way to embed that content inside the Gutenberg. Can you so, also embed views? Currently, you can embed any block. So you can select, okay. one, of the, you can select one or multiple views to be uh, available in your Gutenberg editor. And they can. The good thing is that you can also show like a preview of the things in Gutenberg. So we were able to create uh, an integration to show a timeline, for example. So that timeline were, was using a, a really heavy JS, and we were able to make it work in Gutenberg. So the people were able to see the timeline working in Gutenberg while they were editing. So that was really crazy. And that was the timeline of President Obama's presidency. Yeah, or yeah, I think that one. Did you have a question? I, one of them was about the views, but then the other one I had was um, you, you, you can save blocks like you showed us the section one. But what about saving the whole page? You yeah, you can do the template? you can do that. Okay. You can just select all the components and select uh -huh. that and use that one as a as a starting point right. for other one. So yeah, you can select two, three, any okay. amount of awesome. components. Thank you. Did you have something? Yeah. Does it play well with translation? Yeah, currently it supports translation, so it works in the same way that Drupal out of the box works. So you just uh, hit uh, the translate button and it will replicate by default the, the, the English version and you can start from there. So it supports translation and revisions, so you can, do, you can use both things. Yep. Have you had any conflicts with it where you had to switch out uh, using it temporarily or as a workaround or something like that? It's no. Like it doesn't it, always 
No, in general, because most of the people who don't use Gutenberg, they are using CK8 or something like that. They usually don't go from Layout Builder to Gutenberg or things like that. So usually they are coming from CK Editor and they want a better way to manage just that content. So in this case, we didn't have issues in, in, in past. So no, in general, we, we didn't find any, any weird situation trying to uh, disable because if by default, it, the, the HTML maintains in the same way. Uh, Gutenberg just is adding some uh, comments in the HTML and that's it. Yep. So you would use both uh, Layout Builder and Gutenberg, you would pick one? Yeah, you can use both at the same time. You just enable the Gutenberg for the content types that you want, and that's it. So yeah, you can use a combination of multiple things. For example, you, you may want to use a still Layout Builder for some things, and maybe there is a, a specific content type or article or landing page content type that you want to provide this flexibility, you can just Install the Gutenberg module and enable just for that on the time. Yeah. Um, just curious, if you look at the database, if you look at content created by CK Editor versus Gutenberg, is it different just class? Yes, yeah, the difference will be some comments. Gutenberg will be will be wrapping some elements inside some comments to identify the components. That's it. But the HTML will remain the same. Yeah. Thanks for coming.